Hello and welcome back to our little 2012 Formula 1 season in AMS2 in virtual reality. We're here in Suzuka for the Japanese Grand Prix, which will be the penultimate race of our shortened 2012 season. Lewis Hamilton has the chance to wrap up his championship here if he gains 10 or more points on Fernando Alonso. This, for example, would mean that Hamilton wins the championship should he win here and Alonso finishes no higher than third. Of course, many more scenarios would be possible, but it'd take ages to go through all of them, so let's rather do this on the fly while we're watching the race. In this race, we'll compete as hometown hero Kamui Kobayashi, who of course finished on the podium with a sensational performance in the real 2012 Japanese Grand Prix. Before we try to repeat that, let's take a look at the starting grid. And Lewis Hamilton has done a great job yesterday in qualifying his dials from pole position alongside his main championship rival Fernando Alonso. Jensen Button starts from third after two unlucky DNFs in a row. Sebastian Vettel fourth. He still has outsider chances, but these are pretty much only mathematically um, to win the championship. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen then in 5th. Nico Hülkenberg impressive qualifying by the 4 senior driver. He starts in 6th. Then it is Michael Schumacher, Kamui Kobayashi, Mark Webber, Felipe Massa, Sergio Perez, our teammate in 11th. Nico Rosberg 12th. Robin Grosjean in 13th. And then the rest of the grid is Di Resta, Maldonado, Daniel Ricciardo, Bruno Senna, Jean-Éric Verne, Heike Kovalainen and Vitaly Petrov starting in 20th and last. And here we are on the grid as Kamui Kobayashi starting in P8 and it's lights out and away we go here in Suzuka and we get a good start. We are already alongside Michael Schumacher and past him and now in between Kimi Raikkonen and Nico Hülkenberg going into turn one. But uh, that is pretty much... Uh, only one spot gained for us as we exit the first corner in seventh. We were alongside Nico Hülkenberg, but he manages to stay ahead. Now through the S's for the first time. Pretty exciting uh, corner combination. The S's here as we are now running towards Degna for the first time. And now we come up to one of the better overtaking spots, the hairpin. But we are too far away from Hülkenberg. You need to do a surprise attack there, as Weber is trying it around our outside. But we get the better exit out of the hairpin. And uh, are now on the run towards Spoon Corner. Uh, this is important to get a crucial... Uh, it's crucial to get a good exit here, because... The next best overtaking spot is coming up here, which is the run towards 130R and the chicane afterwards. We're gaining on Hülkenberg as we're using our curse to gain time. And now we choose the outside line for the chicane and we make it past the German in his falls in. Yeah, we get the corner done and that is already the first lap of the Suzuka International Racing Course done. Hamilton leads from Alonso, Button, Vettel and Raikkonen. And then we follow in P6, as we've just passed Nico Hülkenberg. And behind us, it's Weber, Michael Schumacher and Massa. These are the top 10 after the first lap of this race, as we are now following Kimi Raikkonen. And as we join ourselves once again, on the end of the second lap, we have closed the gap to Kimi Raikkonen and will be trying to attack him on this lap. DRS has now been activated, but we'll only be able to use it at the end uh, of this lap, as there is just one DRS zone, which is the main straight. Um, that probably being the best overtaking spot, followed by ahead of the hairpin and uh, ahead of the chicane and the hairpin then. So, it's not impossible to overtake here, but it's a little more difficult than on the tracks we've driven on earlier, as we just switched into the wrong gear there. Um, yeah, Spa and Monza are really easy to overtake. Uh, this one here will be a little tougher, but far from impossible. To, we are too far from Raikkonen going through the hairpin.
but now on the run towards Spoon. We saved our curse to maybe try to attack Raikkonen here. And out of Spoon we go. We are pretty fast, but we are a little far away once more from Raikkonen. As we go through 130R, of course, that corner is flat out. We tried on the outside towards the chicane again, like we did with Hulkenberg on the opening lap, but that didn't work. Raikkonen a little quicker on the straights than the Force India. Uh, not the greatest of exits out of the final corner, but we are still close and we have DRS and with the help of the rear wing it is pretty easy. We breeze past Raikkonen and move up into P5 and ahead of us is the leading pack. Well and we ran close to the leading pack but not really as close to attack them. Uh, for a couple of laps now. This is already lap 10 while we join ourselves again and ahead of us there is a tremendous battle so position switching back and forth as we are going through the chicane Hamilton leads ahead of Sebastian Vettel who just passed Alonso through the chicane so if we finish like that Hamilton will have won the championship but that's still far in the future. Vettel is trying to attack Hamilton on the main straight, which doesn't work. On the other hand, Button now trying it around the outside of Alonso, but that didn't work. So we remain with Hamilton, Vettel, Alonso and Button. And their battle, these, this four-car battle, has actually allowed us to get inside their DRS window and close to them. So maybe we can get involved in that four-car uh, tussle for the lead as well. But for now, we are rather watching what they're doing and seeing if, well, maybe we can take advantage of someone running wide or misjudging a corner while fighting. Alonso trying to route the outside against Vettel once more in the hairpin, but that didn't work either. Now, the interesting bit after Spoon, I believe there will be fights going on. Alonso trying to get back into P2 against Vettel, which he did through Spoon. This was a surprise move, didn't expect that to happen, but Alonso now ahead of Sebastian Vettel and he may be even trying to attack his championship rival uh, Lewis Hamilton going through 130R. They're going side by side, there's a lot of dirt now off the racing line, so you would mm, like to avoid that usually, as Vettel now has dropped behind Jensen Button as well in the final corner. All of that dirt making it pretty hard to fight uh, towards the chicane as you don't really want to break on the dirt there and you need to stay on the racing line. A little bit of dirt also in turn one as you've seen there. Don't know what happened there but this has probably brought on the track by cars going off. I really wonder why there is so much ahead of the chicane because that is really a lot of dirt. Alonso on the outside, by the way, right now on Hamilton going towards Degna. But, yeah, no surprises there. That didn't work. And now he may be vulnerable for Jensen Button. Jensen Button may help his teammate here to win the championship in this race already. But he isn't able to make a move now on Alonso. Alonso once more alongside Hamilton going towards Spoon. But he needs to be careful because Button probably will be able to help uh, Hamilton win the championship in the penultimate race already. If he makes it past Alonso, he may try to hold them up as much as he can so that Hamilton gets kind of a gap. Through 130R, I believe Button is alongside Alonso now and I think he has made it past through the fast left-hander. Yes, he did. Button is now ahead of Alonso. There is a left car in our way. Uh, this is a Caterham and we decide, as there is now lap traffic, to go in for our one and only pit stop. This is a little earlier than the halfway point. 
but uh, now we have been on the soft tires and we will be changing on towards the medium. It is not the greatest of stops, 5.8 seconds, that surely goes a lot quicker, as we are now still in the pits and exiting them now in P12, so no, not too far away from the points, and of course we are the first cars of the first car of the leading pack to actually do their pit stop. And a couple of laps later we have caught up to 11th, which is Felipe Massa, and there is a lot of cars ahead, and there is a lot of battling going on, as we will probably try it into the hairpin, a surprise attack on the fresh tires, we are able to be a lot later on the brakes and we make it past Felipe Massa. This is now crucial because if we want the undercut to work for our fight for podium uh, finish, we need to make it past these cars here as fast as we can. We have cleared Massa pretty fast, lost a little bit of time there, but look at what's going on here. Uh, this is Nico Rosberg ahead of us, Sergio Perez our teammates, so that shouldn't be the greatest of problem, but um, yeah, he is in a battle as well, Romain Grosjean, the third car that is there, as we're trying an alternate line, but we have to go through the dirt, which is still there. Button now having to defend against Rosberg, Rosberg not with the greatest of exits, this may be our chance, but obviously he has DRS as well, now this might be a problem, will we fail in our fight for a podium because we are stuck in traffic and there is another KTM that we just labbed here. I think that has to be the one that uh, the others uh, passed ahead of our pit stop, which was the reason why we came in to avoid lab traffic, but now we have them here as we are trying around the outside here towards Stengner on Rosberg, this is pretty daring towards Stegner, you usually wouldn't overtake there, but uh, Rosberg thinks better of it and backs out and lets us through, which actually is a wise choice to do, because on the fresh tires we are a lot quicker than these cars now, around the outside of Grandjean, this didn't work. So, we are still behind these two. Uh, Perez made it past Grosjean, so he is on a quest for a points finish. We are now running in 11th, trying to make it past Grosjean, so we are back in the points. Now, towards 130R, the two ahead of us are battling. This makes it a lot harder for us, as we are now on the outside of Grosjean, running towards the hairpin. Uh, Grosjean through the dirt, but he is very light on the brakes still, and we back out of it as, well, Perez was just blocking our way there. As we're now trying to get a good exit on towards the pit straight, with the help of the rear wing, Grosjean is... A making it past Perez, but there we go, trying to make a move on both of them, and ahead of us there is a car coming out of the pit lane, we make it past Perez and Grandjean, and great news there, as this is Lewis Hamilton, the race leader ahead of the pit stop, joining just ahead of us, so we are pretty close, so we and we are actually fighting for a podium, and we are taking advantage of our warm tires against Lewis' cold ones, and make it past through the S's with a lot more grip right now, as Hamilton is still trying to get temperature into his tires, we make it past Lewis Hamilton and are now just behind Michael Schumacher and Nico Hülkenberg, who are fighting for points as well, but are now holding up uh, to the leading drivers that have already pitted. I don't know if this was the greatest of decisions, because now Button, Alonso and Vettel may be getting good lap times in at the uh, at the the front but of course they are still battling so they their lap times can't be that great we are battling as well but as soon as we clear them we should be able to do a lot uh, more faster laps than uh, the guys at the top right now as we're getting a good run through 130R alongside Hulkenberg but we back out of the move and Hamilton really pushes himself through there. So we got a little bit of cold feet there as we were just trying 
uh, to not crash. And Hamilton took advantage of that. He is risking a lot, I, I believe, uh, for the fact that he has a good lead in the championship. But he seems to uh, want to wrap it up here in Suzuka as he just made it past uh, Nico Hülkenberg. We try to do the same thing, but it is tough in the S's. And you need the opponent car to uh, go along with it if we try if you try to do something here. Um, but Hulkenberg is quite pretty much a tough ask to get by him. Now into the hairpin, we are pretty close and we are late on the brakes once more with our fresher tires as Hamilton has now made it past uh, Michael Schumacher, the seven-time world champion, in his penultimate race of his career. Hulkenberg is gaining on us towards Spoon, but we managed to stay ahead. And now we will use our remaining curse boost to try and um, gain on Schumacher so that we can maybe take him on the main straight. Stay off the dirt here. We're too far away going into the chicane, but now uh, we get a good exit out of the corner here. But oh, Schumacher has DRS as well, so we probably won't be able to pass him. And there is Jensen Button coming out of the pit lane. So we are ahead of him. We gained a spot in the pits on him. And um, this is how we're running right now. Alonso still without a stop. Hamilton now back into P2. Schumacher in third. And then we are already in fourth. So of the drivers who have pitted, we are sitting in P2. So we're actually fighting for a podium. We have cleared Sebastian Vettel as well as we just finally made it past Michael Schumacher in the S's. Well, and here we are, four laps from the end, and we're still running in P2. We are still somewhat inside Hamilton's DRS window, which allows us to stay on the same distance as him, which is quite crucial, um, because once we are outside his DRS, we will probably lose a couple more tenths on him. Uh, but the DRS is always taking us back a little bit. And oh, there's a lapped car in the way. A KDRAM holding up Hamilton through the S's. So we have now gained quite a lot. And are pretty close to the McLaren driver. So we should actually be able to attack him into the hairpin maybe. Getting a good exit out of Dagna too. But uh, he is late on the brakes as well. He was knowing what we were trying to do now but we're still pretty close this might allow us to attack him in the last three and a half laps of this race this would be I mean as it is it is a sensational result for Komori Kobayashi finishing second in his home race but maybe with the help of the lapped caterer there we could even be able to make it a home win for the Japanese driver. We are too far away to make a move into the chicane, but now with a good exit on the main straight with DRS, we haven't been as close as we are right now in pretty much since we have cleared Michael Schumacher. The gap was pretty much the same. We are gaining on the main straight, but we are not close enough to make a move into turn one. And now through the S's, we can't make any move at all. And this here is the penultimate lap. The gap is still pretty much frozen at that point. There is another lapped car. This is the Toro Rosso of uh, jean eric Verne, I believe. As Hamilton made it past with ease this time, ahead of the hairpin. This time this is a little bit of an issue for us, as we are losing a bit of time against Hamilton now. Through Spoon, this is the earliest uh, point where we may get through, but we get a pretty good run through Spoon. Hamilton a little slower there, 
Is he struggling on grip? We have realized that already, because in the S's he isn't as fast anymore. But on the straights, he saves himself on the straights because the McLaren is a lot quicker than us uh, in these spots. So it is hard for us to make a move into the chicane or on the main straight even with the help of the rear wing. As we are now entering the final lap of the 2012 Japanese Grand Prix. The sun is setting but this battle still is not over. With the RS into turn 1 it is not possible. The final lap of this race may Kamui Kobayashi do a sensational feat and win his home race here in a Sauber, the first race for Sauber, uh, not BMW Sauber of course, but the first race for the Sauber team to win. This is a great opportunity now, as we are pretty close still through the S's. This is what I meant. I think Hamilton is now starting to struggle on his tyres. Ours feel still great as we are going towards the hairpin this might be one of our best chances because here he can't run away with his straight line speed we try to make a move into the hairpin very light on the brakes and we actually make it past now we're blocking the way for Hamilton so that he can't uh, take advantage of a better exit which he can't actually do because we actually defended very well now going through spoon the main issue now is that Hamilton has a faster car on the straights. There is still a big opportunity coming up for Lewis Hamilton and our curse boost is uh, pretty much drained as well. We just have a little bit remaining which we use right now but he is gaining on us. He is gaining on us through, towards 130R which is the inside line to defend but that puts us on the dirt going towards the chicane and now we can't break as late as we would like to and Hamilton takes the lead back out of the final corner and with it Lewis Hamilton now is a two-time Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton wins the 2012 world championship and Kamui Kobayashi what a what a bittersweet podium for the Japanese driver I mean ahead of the race second place would be something where he would have said wow I definitely would take that what a great result but it could have been so so much more but anyway, what a race by Kamui Kobayashi, who finishes second. And let's look at the result of the Japanese Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton wins, just wins ahead of Kamui Kobayashi. Fernando Alonso finishes in third, Jensen Button fourth. Another great result for the McLaren team, who wrap up the Constructors' Championship as well. Kimi Raikkonen finishes fifth, Sebastian Vettel disappointing race in sixth. Then it is his teammate Weber, Grosjean, Pastor Maldonado takes another two points for Williams and Schumacher finally the first point after the opening race with his impressive win in Monaco. He has failed to score a point ever since and today that changed. It is just one point but that is a lot better than the last races. And for the Drivers' Championship, let's look at them. Lewis Hamilton is first with a 25-point lead out of Fernando Alonso, which means that he will win the championship this season. Alonso can only finish on equal points, but he will then have less wins than Hamilton. Uh, Sebastian Vettel then in third, Mark Webber fourth, Jensen Button moves up to fifth, Raikkonen sixth, Kobayashi now up to 7th, so ahead of both Mercedes, Grosjean down in 10th. And then we see on the second page Massa, Perez, Maldonado, Hülkenberg, Senna, Ricciardo, Di Resta, Vern, Kovalainen and Petrov still without any points. And for the Constructors' Championship, I have mentioned it already, McLaren also wins that one, Ferrari, uh, uh, Red Bull, sorry, can't catch up to them anymore. A disappointing second half of the season for the Red Bull team and Sebastian Vettel, Scuderia, Ferrari in third. Uh, they may be able to attack Red Bull, though pretty unlikely. Uh, Lotus in fourth, then Sauber moves up to fifth. This will be an interesting battle between Sauber and Mercedes in the final race of the season. Williams then in seventh, Force India eighth, Toro Rosso ninth and Caterham in last without any points. And that has been it for the Japanese Grand Prix 2012. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I hope to see you all the next time for the final race of the season, which will be the Brazilian Grand Prix in Sao Paulo. Subscribe to not miss that, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all the next time. Goodbye.